So with that, we're going to be going into game two here. Elevate, they're in a weird spot right now at the bottom of the list. They need a lot of wins. Another win on TSM could start their path to land. Now, coming into this one, do you expect Elevate to potentially make the mistake of like, we just beat TSM, hey, we don't care anymore. Or will they be like, hey. That's what I'd be doing. Or would it be, hey, we did this once, let's do it again and put it to bed. No, I, I would probably just go to bed. Now, now if we won one. Now, if you're TSM, what's the, what's the talk here? It's got to be your, dark. What's your comms call here? It's got to be dark in comms right now. Just silent? Just abs absolutely, like radio silence. I mean, Boosh comes back. Right, everyone's like, "Is Bush going to be practiced?" Had it's a great, the first three kills of the had game. Had a great game. Bush right? for the stop. And then Snoopy Big. got soloed once, but Snoopy also soloed. Soon once. Snow soloed first. Snoopy right. soloed first. Is the still, key. still, it was a one for one in the mm -hmm. end, right? But then Ionic versus Met Yankee. Met Yankee had complete control of the game. Ionic didn't, right? Gars yeah. had very little effect over the game. He pulled Vesalius in and got a kill, and then it was the Mithiri Aduro combo that just spelled the entire turnaround. Maybe, maybe it was that one team fight. Maybe they can shake it off. But, I mean, I, I've seen the TSM guys play a lot. Uh, we know that they can shake it off. They went 0-2 against AFK hey, and hey, then 3-2 to Four of these members went to the World Championships and finished third. Yeah, that's right? true. The last LAN, four of these members won the last LAN we had at the studio. That's very true. In which case, they should be used to being behind sometimes and coming back. They right. dropped one game here. It's not a be-all and end-all. Oh. But Elevate, well, they're going to take... This Deb is away crazy from Ionic. I mean, Ionic. Some Wukong's up. I Ionic barely did anything that game. I mean, I, I attribute a lot of the fights lost because Ionic was out of position and Aduro punched Wait, it. Some Wukong's up. Serket is up. They pick Geb? And they pick Geb. But Geb Shield, man. I mean, Ion uh, sorry, not Ionic. Incon was on an interview not too long ago saying you can pick Geb anywhere and be happy because Geb Shield is number one ability in the game. Well, it doesn't look like we're going to see Degas picking up Serket this game as Thor's just been locked in for him. And Thor Gars, well. Let's go back to tried and tested, says TSM. I think this is this to me is a shaken TSM because if if Gars has Circuit open and goes to Thor, they're looking for comfort. It's funny because we've only seen Gars pick up Circuit twice this season so far. One win, one loss on it. The last time he played it was against Eager in their loss. But that's true. Since then, we've not seen it since the start of the season. It's been a long time since we saw it. Elevate two picks here. Probably going to look for the mage again. Ra did wonderfully. I'm, I'm expecting TSM to go agony again, unless we see Elevate take it away from him. Because Ice is off the table again. No argument for me on the Rama pick. Not at all. Vizelius played well on it. He made a small miscalculation mis once and taking a Snoopy in that one little battle earlier and, on. Well, and walking then, into the, the lane back. and mid lane, but that wasn't a Rama problem. That was just, you shouldn't have done that. The rotation was just bad. And Scary D gonna go back again to that Bologna. So we're gonna see Bologna versus Summerkong over again. And to be fair, I don't think Bickham made mistakes in that lane. It was just, he was a non-factor, which is yeah. kind of what solo lane can be if the rest of the team is not doing well. Well, Bologna gets locked in. Likely to see the Bologna versus Sun Wukong once again. It's probably not going to be the jungle. Uh, over to TSM. I think they're going to save the Agni pick. I know you just said that Bologna could be in the solo lane again, but we've seen it in the jungle a couple of times with my theory as well. That's true. They played it a it lot. It is one season. of his best gods. They've switched it about a little bit. They could even go for Osiris as well. Whoa. But Sylvanas, Sylvanas pulled out. Hey, Ionic said a long time ago, Sylvanas don't give it me, but he's been changed. Since my, my issue here is that Ionic got caught so many times in the last game, and now he's picked a god that has less escapes. Did he get caught though? I don't think he got caught. Maybe he blinked in either. Too early, the team didn't follow up in time, is what I want to say. I don't think he, he did get caught, I would say. I mean, that's getting caught. It's not. It's aggression, but aggression too early. That's the difference. And then what happens? You, you get caught. Well, it's not caught. You're just out of position <laughs> then because the team didn't follow. It's the team's fault. That's what you do. I'm a support <laughs> player. That's what we do. We blanket in the shit. Guys, where are you? What the hell? You're supposed to do something. Guys, I just I just catted three people. But I think that was the key. I don't think it was necessarily him getting caught because he was being out of position. It was, he was out of position because he was going aggressive too early. Something that could help here is the fact that this is a knock-up, not a stun, which means they can't beads on reaction anymore, right? Ionic has a better chance to set up those kills that you're talking about and hoping that his team will follow up. Also, Kep was taken off the table by TSM this Agni. time round as well. And Ra banned out by Elevate. Here comes Agni. Why it's got to be. Why would Ra be banned out? I mean, oh, by Elevate. Oh, I yeah, no that's idea. what I'm confused about. Well, that I mean, one. it's Boosh. I guess, but we've not seen Boosh. Well, like we said, they've not done homework then because Boosh all game of the season. That's now game eight out of nine? That's actually, I think that's nine out of ten. Is that game? You might be right. It's nine out of ten, yeah. Um, Nasha going into the jungle. Nine out of ten games is Agni. And you ban Raw. I'm just surprised about it. But Nasha, let's talk about that because we've not seen Nasha. it. We've not seen it too much in the last few seasons, but this season it's starting to make prevalence and seen it more. I was so excited for so long because no one played Nasha and I got to like go into games and just use him and no one knew what to do. And now like people like Dare to Care are like, look at how much damage I can do. So now I can't pick him anymore because I just die. And Nasha's not actually got a bad matchup against an Agni either for at least closing the gap and chasing down the Path of Flames. Oh, especially coupled with a Poseidon. Oh. Falling into things 
sucks. Falling into Krakens sucks even worse. And that's the big key is if, if we can see a Duro time the Krakens perfectly with when Nija falls, it's dead. Is instant death pretty much. Or straight into another knockup. And what's great is the Geb is on the side of Nasha. Now this means two things. Since Ionic didn't Geb Geb, e Nasha can actually ult Sylvanas for full damage. Remember, uh, Geb's passive reduces critical damage, which is well, one of the reasons we saw uh, Eager's jungler Dare to Care fall early on in their set last weekend, because he ulted the Geb, didn't do enough damage to kill him, and then died. Second, Nasha can ult someone, and usually after that point he's stuck. The Geb shield's gonna be able to get him out of danger. Not to mention they have Bologna to follow up with the Eagles rally. This comp, is super cute. So this should be looking for my theory to be the very, very aggressive, and Geb should be the secondary aggressive, but more with the shields for when my theory lands more than anything else, or in case he gets in trouble. Yeah, that's that's what I want to see, big time. Uh, early game Nasha, though. Let's talk about this. Talk about early game, one second. Two early beads on the side of TSM. Why are we seeing two early beads? Because, I mean, if... Uh, let's say the, the mid-camp fight starts. Yeah, but where's the aggression? Where, where's the CC? Le well, I mean, we're going to get to that. Okay. Le let's say the mid-camp fight starts, level two. All four players are level two, right? Okay. And... Thor starts to spin right. on the creeps. Nasha jumps in, dead. Because now Thor's all of his damage is gone. Ring is hitting two people. Mm -hmm. Right, The whirlpool follows up. He's so stuck inside of how it. How does Beads help him? He gets him out of the stun. Oh, gets him out of the stun from the, the sash. Right. Remember, Nasha is going to go no matter what to the point that he stunned you at. You could Beads it on reaction and walk away and counter him with a, with a double tap, right? Or, you know, Agni, Path of Flames right mm -hmm. through him. The damage potential on the turnaround is big. Uh, we're going to get a quick pause, though. Quick pause at the start of the game. But we did also see Power Pot on Nija and Thor as well in the jungle this time around. See, and you got to be careful against Thor, right? Especially er early game. Double level taps. 2, Warrior Madness, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to give him 30 damage. Uh, plus, it was, I guess, Bumba's Mask, right? Not Blue Stone. Yeah. All right, plus the 20 damage from Pot. So he's going to have 50 damage out of the gate. Now, the scaling on the Warrior, I'm sorry, on the Milner's Attunement on Berserker Mirage isn't incredibly high. It's nothing to write home a mom about. Mm -hmm. But... One auto attack from Thor of 50 damage at level 2 is like a quarter of your health. <laughs> can be very, very painful. But beside him, very good early clear and make him control, to be fair. He can pretty much solo. He can clear the wave at level, for level 2 yeah. and then go for harpies on his own if required and clear them without being under too much duress, potentially, and actually you know, set up the jungle just to be able to come in and pick up experience. Do you think we're going to see the paradigm start again? I don't know, because it, it, to be fair, it didn't work out for TSM until TSM made a play that made it happen for them when they got the mid harpies again. See, because they lost a red buff. I think buff. it would have been fine if they didn't lose their red buff. But yeah, I agree. They foolishly but they gave lost the, the red buff. buff. Everything apart from losing the red buff was the correct call. The one mistake they made was get, losing the red buff. But how, why did they? Was it because, I can't, I can't remember exactly what happened. Was it TSM going to the different back harpies to begin with instead of going for the red? I don't remember. Probably should have just gone for the red. But we're going to run it back. Well, Sammy running back, but he's going to be the same start. Yeah, like you said. That oh, ward right there, that's big. They know that this paradigm start is happening. That oh. was a blue ward. Oh, I didn't realize that one. So that they actually know exactly what's going on with the start here. And what's great about that ward as well is it's it it more than shows them that they're just doing the mid camps. It also shows their intent after the mid camps are over. Which side of the map do they run to? Do they go for the invade or do they go for their own purple? Now they know on the bottom side, on elevate side, that the TSM boys are going up to the purple buff, which means they have a great trip to lane. They're going to be a little bit faster because of the route and having the uh, middle lane there as well. Which means, and as you see, they gain control of the lane. But it is going to put elevate in a bit of an awkward position there. Did that double tap connect? Could you check with experience there? Golden experience quickly. I just wait to see who got those because it looked like Thor. That's not how you do it. Zaiden to the graphs. Ah, it should be graphs that quick. Oh, he did go. He did go to elevate. I was sure blinking Whoa. for Met Yankee over aggression. Snoopy, did, but it's all the body blocking is great coming out from Met Yankee there. So it puts a lot more pressure on Snoopy. Has no health potions. Roll in all got aggression him. for Vesalis. He feeling it. He's gonna find it. Met Yankee with the in hands. And we got a dash from Boosh. And look at this. After that kill, they're gonna go right to the back line once again. This oh, is the way for Gars. Gars, you can't die here. They're looking for Gars. Will he be able to find the pick up onto him on that right hand side? No, he won't fall down. But they're gonna start the red buff up here. They're gonna be a little bit careful because Agni and Thor could do a lot of damage. But yeah, look they, at the rotation from this Elevate. Is, this is very strange. They they should not be doing this. Look at Vesalius' health right now. Uh -oh. uh, Gars going Gars in. Baited. I think Gars got made to know about the support coming out from the team. And there, the ring bounce works for my theory. This is really big because not only is that a second kill for Elevate, but they just took a power pot off of Gars. His jungle camp timers are going to be so much later now because... Oh, and look at that ring. Good, nice little ring toss from my theory coming out again there too. Oh, but you said this last game, DM, that 
Elevate, for the most part, these are solo queue stars, right? They're used to playing the early game and being aggressive. Right. They're making it work for them now, but can they make it work the whole game is the question. The teamwork is starting to really come to fruition. It looks like these, you know, six or seven weeks of scrims that they've been getting under their belt are starting to finally pay off. They're looking a lot more like a team and much less like the ranked superstars that they were before. They are looking like a unit. Well, my theory did stay in that duo lane for quite a long time there and soak some experience. So putting Vesalius a little bit further down in experience than he probably would have liked to have been. And he didn't get that kill, which Geb got. It would have been a shame if it would have gone over to him. It would have been a little bit of a better situation there. I mean, I like Geb getting kills, man. I love the I love the play from the team, though. They blink in aggressively against Snoopy. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. That's going to force the ult. Yeah, Bickham. Forced to the sky here. Let's see what the decoy Engage. does. He's going Engage. down. It's worth it. He's got the clone still chasing after him as well. He had the blue stone for the Jingu Bang to keep the poke going on. And the full minion wave in support. It was worth the aggression there. I really like the call from Bickham, honestly. I think that was the right call to do. And it allowed him to get in the right situation. Etheria facing off against three in the mid lane by himself. But go, go back to that dual lane, though. Met Yankee blinks in to Ionic and Snoopy. Right, right. Yeah, and then blink, not even blinks in, blinks body behind. Blocks. No, no, and body blocks was the bigger key. Right. Body blocks were huge on That's Snoopy. That's what I'm saying. He's he gets only the level Naka, two. And then just starts body blocking his way out. This allows Vesalius to get a few choice hits. And then uh, Vesalius, so smart, doesn't use his two, right, because he doesn't have it, doesn't use his three immediately. So by him not rolling directly into that fight, Snoopy thinks to himself, oh, he didn't get his three. Okay, mm -hmm. so Snoopy turns around. Because Snoopy knows every matchup in the game is what Snoopy does, right? But because he didn't roll in, Snoopy turns around and tries to fight, and then Vesalius rolls in and kills him. Gets the, gets the pickle with the in hand as well. Right hand side though, gank onto Scary D coming out here from Degas. Will he be able to find it? Yes, he tried to pick up Bickham in response, but it was too little too late. TSM get themselves on the scoreboard. Importante. That was that was necessary. Oh, wait. oh Yankee's Bickham. gonna get the knock up, but there's no follow-up from Maduro there. I think they were a bit worried about Degas keeping the pin <laughs> under the tower there. Look at Maduro's like, eh, you <laughs> take this. Why didn't when, why did they just walk away from Gaza? Why didn't they just whirl pull Kraken? I mean, I don't think it would have been enough. Right, because he's got no beads. What? He's got no beads. Who? Gars. I mean, they could have potentially all ended. Oh, right. That, I mean, I, I don't think it would have been enough. Okay. I think the Kraken would have did about half, right? And then after that, Geb wasn't doing any damage. The shockwave was already down. Maybe if they had chosen the Medjay, you could have potentially gone for it, but he's Possibly, not got yeah. full boots online with no penetration there. Two to one is the scoreline though in favor of Elevate right now. Not something you'd expect to say a in this gold up. right now. Thousand gold with one kill over is pretty impressive at this stage of the game. Well, TSM are now eight and nine, so they've got a negative record right now coming into this one after that defeat. Oh, wow. They were even coming into it. T has TSM ever been negative? I'm not sure. Not sure if they were negative at some point this season. I'll I don't think. I mean, I don't think that's even remotely possible. Uh, season zero, you know, they 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 weren't a part of actually. Season one. They go into Worlds with an almost undefeated record. No, I don't think they've been negative at all. To start the season, they went even with Denial, then Eager, they beat Eager 2-0. Then against Cognitive, they drew with Cognitive as well. Right. So they were always positive all the way well, through. I'm saying, what about aside from this split? Oh, from this split? I'm not so sure. I just know this split, they've not gone negative. I, I, don't, I would like to say I don't think so, especially with the fact they've ended 1-2 and two every single well, season. Well, because technically they're not negative yet. Right? The set isn't over. Well, that's true. We don't count the set until it's complete. That's true. Oh, Scary D forced to jump away here. Bickham going to go for it? It's a bit risky going in. He's actually not going to get aggro. Oh, the clone took it. That was a good use of him from there, actually, to realize the clone was going to be just in range as he leapt down. That's a little lucky. I, d I don't think he actually realized that he didn't have aggro. I think, yeah, if that's he, probably he why he didn't commit. I guess if he thought he had aggro, that he had, if, he, sorry, if he didn't have aggro, I think he would have gone all in for Scary D and probably found the kill as well, to be honest. This time, Bickham has been much more aggressive. And, and while that aggression didn't really work out, it's much better to have aggression that nets you nothing versus defense that gets you killed. Well, it's also Gaz is actually supported, but talking about Gaz, he's in the sky now is my theory. Already used the ultimate to disengage. Not going to get dunked, though. Not going to get walled off either, as now you can see the Kraken coming out looking Boosh, for the though. big pick on Boosh. That Boosh actually ages the Kraken and still gets picked off. Gaz trying to find something. Aduro one hit away. Yon, there's a two mate oh, gonna Snoopy. find it. On the backside, he's gonna manage to try and find Met Yankee here. He's trying to roll out and get away. My theory though gets the double on Ionic. Look that at was this. Killer. Scary D he's gonna baiting. Try and support Met Yankee. Snoopy's in a bit of a rough spot now. And we're seeing a rotation over from Gars as well. Double tap. Spin gonna do it. Berserker Barrage finds a kill on the Met Yankee. Vesalius take it to the sky. Sure gonna gosh. find not one. Second one's good. Scary D finds the third and wins the fight. He does win the fight. And now Bickham trying to trade back a little bit, but realizing Scary D is alongside and backs away from a no man of Vesalius there, who both those hunters made the rotation. And on paper, they pretty much even. 0 0 4 and 0 2 1. You don't get that much for an assist these days.
That's true. I mean, look at the gold. It's got a 200 gold difference. Not that big of a deal. I think the big thing is that, you know, Metheria here, 300 level 9, uh, compared to 211 level 8, uh, has about a 400 gold lead over Gars. Not to mention, uh, Gars lost his potion pretty early on. But yeah, at both, this point, neither has. Both those hunters in that rotation would be probably not un uh, unhappy about that. Well, both unhappy because neither of them picked up the kills. They both had opportunities to. Neither of them found the killing blow. Ended up getting assists for themselves. Right, Harpies, though, on here may get contested by both teams. Boosh will have bombs available. Not going to go for the option. Wow, yeah, no, a complete control right there. Uh, Elevate taking the right side. Uh, left camp's not available, so it's going to be a 3v3 skirmish in the mid lane. Gar is going to look for something. Yannick finds all three. Does find all three. My theory, though, straight and an aggressive onto the Gars before Crack he can in. follow up. Into a Kraken combo. Good night, sweet prince. You will fall down. My theory in trouble, but a shield from that Yannick. And that's what we're talking about. You know, he puts himself in a bad position by using that ultimate, but then immediately Met Yankee throws down that shield, gets him out of danger. That was the exact combo we talked about in the beginning, and they're turning a, you know, a rather normal strategy, but they're doing it perfect. That was a textbook execution coming out from Elevate and a free kill on the Gars. And for, to be fair, that was my theory of making the play that Ionic's that ultimate was, was fantastic, play. but he immediately responded straight onto the Gars with the ultimate. Right, Ionic comes in, finds all three, and then Boosh starts raining down fire. Metheria hit him with the old 180 no-scope, doing a raw Nasha ult to hit Gars right in the chest. Right in the chest it did, and then the Kraken that followed it up was textbook too. Exactly time when it needed to be. That Kraken hit him the frame he hit the ground. It was the Whirlpool that killed him. Eight minutes in, elevate six to three. Tune in with the dual lane now. The purple buff is going to spawn soon. A little bit early for this though. And, and I'll go back to the analysis a thousand times mm. that Bickham is not going to have the game. There's no way that Divios would have had, but Divios wouldn't have been a part of that that no. situation. Bickham had nothing to do with the fact that Gars just got caught by an amazing ult from that, Ethereum. That was just Elevate's individual play. That just exactly. That, that wasn't around. TSM messing anything up. That was Elevate making a sick play. Well, you said this as well. You said last game, Ionic got himself out of position. I don't think Ionic made a mistake there at all. He hit three men with the ultimate as well as Bickham and Scaredy. They're going to trade off with the fake lazy back coming out from Bickham. He got punished a little bit for it. But he's baiting in Gars. He's over here as well. So the wall's going to connect. Scaredy going to eat a little bit of poke. Does have ultimate available. Bickham should be able to chase this down. But is the reinforcements coming? My theory is on the way. Now, they're, they're, they're not quick enough and it's really good they both disengaged had they both continued going in Metheria would have threw out a ring it would have done 50% of someone's health and then immediately comboed it right into the ultimate very smart for them to back off and it takes a lot of self control to do something well, like Mytheria, that. Mytheria 3-0 and 1 in this game on the Nijar as well 2 level lead over Degars at the moment already finished Warrior Tabby working on the Jotuns as well and he should have quite a bit of gold in hand right now to go back and spend right. his Snoopy. Vesalius is very clearly feeling himself at this he point really if he's is. up that far. He's a little bit too risky as well. He's got a ward though for a little bit of safety, but against a Thor and a Sylvanas, yeah. a little bit too much. Thor could have came in that one for free. Could have potentially done it, but... Well, he felt himself, and the heals up come out from Apollo thanks to the Devourer's Gauntlets. They've both gone for the Devourer's Gauntlets build this time. We're not seeing any Soul Eater. Dickham and Scary D once again just kind of slap boxing. Both going into the Mystical Mail. No surprises here in the uh, in the solo lane. Left side camps have respawned. We'll here we're going to have a 3v2. More than likely. Take into account, you mentioned this about my theory, and the ring toss can bounce through the harpies onto targets as well. Oh, and man. Yankee zones off. There's only two of them there, though, because the guard is on the right right now, potentially looking for Scary D. Beautiful oh. Eagles rally in response to the Anvil of Dawn dive. Misses the stun again to the sky. We're seeing that combo once again. Doesn't need much more. It's very surprising to not see a bigger follow-up there. Snoopy. Uh, you know, Whirlpool must have been on cooldown. Tried to rotate in support, but instead ate a ring bounce that went to the boosh as well. Gars now rotates in here too. Vesalius turns up after the rotation from Snoopy. That healing is really important right now. Those Wisps might not do a ton, but they're necessary at this stage. Well, one thing about that engagement is going to give the opportunity for Elevate to extend the lead a little bit by taking the right and Harpies to go with the left of so the already got. And Zaiden bring us back to the graphs. Slowly but surely, Elevate is extending this lead in golden experience. It's not gold. huge, though. It's not huge. 2,000 gold is, is you're going to oh, start Vesalius, feeling at this stage. He's a little bit caught out of position here. Going to get full one. Has to take to the sky. Reinforcements are on the way. He's holding the third shot so his team can get in position to support, but they don't have much available. Oh, but he actually gets out thanks to the Whirlpool. There was no chase. Metheria getting a huge ring bounce as well. Able to find a big kill to pick off the first one of the engagement. Gars is already down, and they're still trying to oh, get Oh, the best for Boosh on that bird should be good. Can they find the pickups? No, the last bomb from Boosh misses. So only Adoro falls. Bickham is all the way over here Got trying him. to support. Boosh gets the double on the backside. 
What is Matt Yankee up to? Matt Yankee is going to attempt to roll out very soon. He's I mean, he has no other anywhere. choice. He has to get out of here. He's actually baiting them the super hard right now. Is I didn't like the fact that he was going towards Scary D because Scary D was trying to take speed there. He could have potentially given it up. But Scary D Where was the goal rotate. theory call? He took speed and he pushed a full wave into the tower. There's the Gold Fury call. A little it's, bit it's late. Too, is it too late now? I though? don't think so because it's only Vesalius up. Matt Yankee does have his ultimate. And this is time he's not in your mid. Well, he's does, not, he's not Geb have blink? Time. No, he does not. No. 49 second cooldown right now for this. He's going to roll he's in. He's got though. ult though. Going to have to knock someone. Nope. Going to cancel he's it out. He's got his ult though. Shockwave. Kata. No, too late. No, too late on that one. But he might find a kill for Vesalius though after that big Cataclysm. No, he does get a roll in from Vesalius though. Looking for more damage. Boosh does find a bomb, but he's no stun on it. And Boosh in a little bit of trouble here, but healthy enough to take a few autos. TSM answering back beautifully. We'll go back to the graphs to show you. TSM has caught up in gold. Experience still slightly in favor of the blue team. Team. And this is TSM doing what they should be doing and catching themselves back up. Beckham, though, going to have to try and defend his blue buff there on this right-hand side. I'm not sure who ends up getting that, but Vesalius, well, they just took the it, purple. It went to elevate. It definitely went to elevate, yes. that blue buff? Yes, it's elevated. And Vesalius is taking the red. So what we just saw was TSM got gold fury, right? But then Scary D stole speed. their entire jungle. Scary D stole speed. Scary D stole blue. Oh. Purple buff was stolen by Vesalius, and red buff was stolen by Vesalius. Uh... Let's see here. Bickham forced away. Uh, very low in the mana department. Oh, Apollo Alton in mid lane as Thor dunks down as well. They were trying to pick up the kill onto my third, but under the tower, the Beautiful. slash hit Snoopy. Snoopy might be able to find the kill in the end hand. The double tap misses, but the Kraken connects from Adoro. One falls down in Snoopy, but maybe wow. Adoro will fall down in trade. Oh, third shot going to miss. Vesalius not finding the kill. They wind up trading a one for one, which looked immediately disastrous for Elevate. It was a good play by Adoro and a great play by Metheria, able to stop them from getting a little bit more than they probably should have. Uh, Gar's forced to jump away. The last of his mana has oh, been used. Oh, good pull from Ionic, but there's no real follow-up there. The bomb is a little bit late from Boosh. And Vesalius is very low on mana there, lucky to get away with it. And still, Scary D and Beckham continue to box out in this lane that Scary D is slowly chipping away at this tower. Left side camps have respawned. Once again, looks like they're going to go to blue. Metherius back. He's got that Jotun's ready to go as well. Next up, likely to be Deathbringer. Very, very aggressive game, though. We're looking at 14 kills in less than 14 minutes. A minute a kill is not something we're used to seeing in the first 10, 15 minutes of a game. I mean, last fair. game, it was like uh, six kills total it at this point. Well, it was aggressive stuff. I mean, it was three kills for Boosh already. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. It was, it was, both these games are a bit aggressive, and I'm not sure whether TSM are trying to overforce the issue here and Elevate are just responding very well, or it's just Elevate's game plan is working out well. They're getting the opportunities. Scary D slightly ahead in experience. He hit level 15 before this wave started. In the jungle, though, Boosh has to path of flames away. Looking for aggression onto my fear. That ring damage. toss will slow them down a little bit. A big shield from Met Yankee, followed by a cataclysm. Bickham got to continue the chase as Scary D rotates round and gets a bigger Eagles rally. Oh, Bluestone? No. Doesn't have enough. heavy hammer at the moment either, and now he might get caught out. He's not going to support no, Met Yankee. No, no. Scary D finds the kill. Met Yankee's still chasing in here. He thinks he can get more out of this one, but I don't think it was wise. Gars was not keeping track of cooldowns right there. D the Scourge was up the whole time, and you got to know that she's going to level it second. That's a guaranteed 250 damage to the skull, right? And he lands down. The stuns are going to be DR'd a little bit, considering the fact that he got hit by the 72 transformations. And then he just, real quick, clean kill. Look at this call from Elevate. Realizing the opportunity, they go Love mid, it. take the very, very weakened tower. Snoopy going to get a bit of free farming response, but not enough. Look where the coverage is coming from. Exactly. Metheria immediately rotates back over to the, the duo lane. Snoopy, Snoopy shouldn't be in too much trouble. I, I don't know, because you've got the savings coming. He does have his ultimate as well, so he can get out. The reinforcements of TSM on the way. Look at where he goes. Good call. Go to your teammates. Yeah, Yannick able to cover that one. I like the Ged Shield coming out from Met Yankee too to, to cleanse that CC and give Vesalius a shot at it, but they didn't. I, I really wanted to see the well, ring. Met Yankee just rolled in very aggressively onto the tree, gets himself in a world of hurt there. The team of TSM were aggressing onto a big stuff from Boost, but a bigger Kraken from Adoro to find a double. How is Met Yankee alive? Adoro Don't. finds a double kill. Metheria uh, sending a lot of. Damage. Look at this. Ionic forced to jump away again. He. This is why you don't pick Sylvanas into this comp. Like, he goes Pick in and he's never getting out. 4v1. If you're the new Devio son, show it now. No, he's got to run for his life. The clone is trying to do some damage, but he will fall down. That's not Devio. There's four members of TSM fall to the wayside. Elevate, come out on top on a big fight where, to be fair, it looked like Menka Yankee should have died. That's not Divios. That's not Falco. Happy feet.
No wombo combo? Well, to be fair, I've seen wombo combos all day coming out of Yo, the elevator. In fairness. See, those. Those are wombo combos. Oh. The Metheria ults into the Krakens, right? Into the Geb Shield to get him out. That's the wombo. And immediately, they all go back to base. Buy up, spend this money, get themselves full health, full mana. Because Gold Fury is due up again in 35 have we, seconds. Have we checked the graphs? Let's check in with them. We should be able to see continue but look look at the dip in the gold right when the gold fury was taken by tsm this climb once more from elevate is just getting See, themselves back in the same this spot is the exact opposite of the way that this game should have gone on paper it was supposed to be tsm chipping away at the mm -hmm. league going up and up and up and then it was supposed to be one quick kill for elevate and a gold fury to bring it back down and then tsm works it back up it seems like Elevate have really found themselves in the second half they, of this They split. found themselves some sort of... I think their team has finally come together is the big key point here. Yeah. They've got the communication together now. Adoro's working out for them in the mid lane. Scary D in the solo lane. Found his feet. His composition, his, his team play with my theory has worked out. And it's allowing all the team... And Vesalius! Where did this aggression come from? Look at Scary D in the back line, forcing them to fight him while the Gold Fury gets taken. Snoopy, there's no way he's going to get past Metheria at this point. Gold Fury likely to be taken for free from the boys in blue. And we saw that from Scary D last game as well, as that pull just about misses Wait, did they let it go? onto Ionic. No, they did reset the Gold Fury. I think Snoopy stops it. I think they were worried about re-aggressions. Did Snoopy just cancel that no, again? I mean, Elevate? Snoopy didn't even get in there. And that's the issue. Elevate are playing well, but this could be a way back in for TSM now. Like This is potentially a free Gold Fury, but Kraken, got Kraken is up. And that's another ward... That's like 200 gold worth of wards they've cleared pretty Link easily. in from it. Yankee going to force a reset. He didn't Cataclysm, though. As Bickham on the backside, they'll get some Ooh. good poke on Vesalius. Vesalius got and Snoopy's in the air. Well, Gars is up, too. They're trying to dive all over him. He's going to hit a Duro here. Kraken's still available. Smart of a Duro to be patient here. Double tap, not going to do the damage it needed because of the Geb Shield. And Snoopy is out of position. Snoopy's going to get Kraken to the face, but I think he avoided that with the Aegis. He's shooting with Mytherius using the ultimate onto Beckham. The ring toss is good. He will fall down in trade, though, to Beckham. A scary D going aggressive on Ionic. So far, it looks like a one for one. Ionic getting very Ooh, low here. We're hearing big. a lot of ping. Scary D is tunnel Mystical vision Mayo. super hard right now. He's got Mystical Mail and he's got Frostbound Hammer, so he can keep poking down. Snoopy now is the one that's being focused on. Gars is coming around the back, but very low on mana. He is. Shield. The shield was great from Yankee. Mystical Mail still ticking. One more tick will be enough. Yankee with a shockwave will get it. It's going to be a Snoopy trade here. Scaredy very low here. Vesalia is taking to the sky. No, I'm sorry. I thought he was going to ult there. It's Vesalia Gars finding Scary. I think they can still get these kills as well. If he can continue the pressure. Yankee with a shockwave. Rollout should be the... Oh, the one shot was good, but not enough damage. Oh, my God. Can we see Boots' health? Keep in mind, he's probably really gained low. 10 at this point. Bush was very, very low. Four he's at, yeah, he's gaining probably two health a second at this point, so, so he was, was probably really at like 10. And look at the call from Elevate, though. The rope goes straight back for Gold Fury, but Bickham with a very good teleport in to dissuade them from continuing the aggression. That's the first solo lane play I think we've seen him make so far, is get super aggressive, control the front line, find a kill one for one, and then teleport back into the fight before the person you kill. And there was a better looking TSM in that fight, right? Because we saw Thor go to the sky, Snoopy go up. Snoopy went on Vesalius. Thor went on to Adoro. They split the damage, which is something TSM is very good at 1v1 in and picking targets. They didn't manage to find the kill, though, which was the unfortunate thing for them. And Snoopy, to be fair, he survived for a long time with that Aegis. That Aegis on the Kraken was huge. That's true. Uh, huge. We got another pause. Got another one. Now, um, this is the third time, I think, that we've seen this pause. So we're going to defer to uh, production real quick. Um, is a team out of pauses? All right. All right, so um, there's still one pause remaining on the side of blue. Still two pauses remaining on the side of red. They're taking the time for the most part. and just uh, This might be a technical pause for whatever issue they're having. But to, for you guys at home, none of these pauses are impacting the game in any way, shape, or form. No one's having issues, and it's not TSM in a bad spot because right. of XYZ. This is just Elevate are playing very, very well. They've already taken one game off them, and at the moment, they're giving TSM a run for the money in game two. The theory is alts have been incredible this game. You know, last game he had that one good circuit ult, but after that I didn't feel like the circuit brought a lot to the table. And I think the thing about ultimates as well, you mentioned my theory here, but Adoro. Adoro's held his ultimate to the right moment with these Krakens multiple times. There's I mean, been plenty of opportunities to hit one guy big, but he's waited and held it for the right time. I think aside from Snoopy, it's been it's been Adoro that's been playing this game longest at a competitive level. He was technically season zero. He went to the launch tournament. Mm. Uh, Snoopy did as well, but as a sub. So I think... Aduro actually has, like, technically the longest career, although I would definitely say TSM has a lot more under their belt. So what's point. the difference in Elevate, then? Since they brought Adoro on, and they've managed, they brought Scary D in, where are they finding the gel now? Is it just because you get used to playing with the same people over and over? Well, I mean, l l let's take it back a few weeks, right? They join, they have Aduro join in, mm -hmm. right? And at that point, it comes down to how long can Aduro 
take to get this team in shape, right? Because mm -hmm. he's the only veteran at this point. He's the only one that's going to be able to bring them together. And they had the bye week with the COG Invitational. Yeah. A lot of scrims going on during that time. True. They had a whole bunch of time, you know, to go over the last two weeks. And it just seems like... But with TSM roster being a little bit shaky, this was going to be their week to show that they're a team that contends. Their only real win this season, other than the Cloud9 game, where it was a 4v5 we should know about, was against Denial, who were bottom of the shop with them. So yeah. TSM, middle of the pack right now, expected to be higher. I, this I'm is really good play. I'm Denial is going to make changes soon. Well, to be fair, I'm pretty sure we're not going to see Elevate make any change. If this keeps going the way it's going, they're having a great game so far. Big blink in, though. Cataclysm of Force uh, reset. Yeah, Scary D actually re-pulling, and we're going to see to the Sky 4 stunned off the Anvil of Dawn. Yeah, but there's no one dead is the big key as the shield comes out the back. So the Ionic is really low, and Scary D channel Ring. the vision on him to, again, Mystical Mail. Should be able to pick him down as my theory. It picks up Boosh. Good knockback from Adoro. Bigger cracker, Snoopy. though, again. Snoopy's coming in. No, he doesn't find the right target. Gar super low here as he goes for the stun but doesn't find the kill Snoopy trying to find something the body blocks are going to be good and that's going to be a no, four for, for zero Gold Fury on the way elevate in a great position Yannick kept out the whole fight the entire time by Scary D on the backside as well it was once again TSM that went aggressive but it's elevate that responded in spades you know I think that comes down to Metheria and Boosh Metheria chased down Boosh got a good crit off right Decent amount of damage. You know, he has the 10% mm -hmm. plus the 15 from Flaming Spear. He slammed Boosh. Boosh was not ready for the damage. And the ring, he throws it, right? He throws it right at Ionic. But the big thing is that if Ionic had dodged it, it would have hit the Gold Fury to guarantee the bounce anyway. He guaranteed the damage. So, so smart. But a lot of these things out of TSM are the sort of plays we've seen from all season long. It's just that they're not getting the last hits. It's like one hit. People are escaping on multiple times from all different angles. So unfortunate. Well... The fight washes out. Huge wins across the board here. And uh, Zayden, yes, thank you to the graphs. 14,000 experience, 6,500 gold lead, gold. and a Deathbringer. Look at that 666 six, six gold. The He's advanced sand hands. For my theory, Deathbringer on Nija is not something you want to face. At this, at this stage, 21 mm. minutes, having him have those three core items means Boosh is dead if he doesn't ages or beats. And look at this. If he gets taken up, he dies. With the gold here being down, the tier one tower down on the left-hand side, teleporting from Bickham to defend. But I don't think there's going to be a whole lot he can do to stop three men from trying to take down this tower. Bickham trying to do something here. Uh -oh. Flaming Spear not going to give him a lot of healing. Beautiful. Kraken going to do some damage as well. Bickham takes to the sky they once again. They to Ionic, though, as Bickham's in the sky. But in the end, they do have to back away. Good well from Degas, though. Scary D was a little bit too far There's too the forward. There's the shell. Good that Whirlpool. Was that was a good bait. That was a great bait. It was a good bait, but Boosh is going to return some damage. He's not enough to find a kill. Other sustain from Ionic. He's going to keep Bickham Watch topped up on here. health. He's looking for it. Yeah, huge ring bounce right there. Ionic takes a lot of damage. Met Yankee going right into the back line, looking for the shockwave. Got to find the shockwave and knock him up. And Bickham gets exploded down in the end by the in hand by Met Yankee. was the pickup. Ring toss doesn't bounce from my theory, though. Scary, Scary D. D round the back with the teleport. Comes back into the fray. Boosh has to jump away. Eagles Rally not available. Left side, Vesalius getting soloed down by Snoopy. It's real close here. Snoopy misses the shot. Vesalius Vesalius has a chance here. Ooh. That Aegis at the end after the finger bang was perfectly <laughs> timed as well to that pick it up. That was a double kill. That Doesn't was a double stop. KO that Snoopy just stopped. He did stop a double KO. Scary D still diving in. Big pull from Ionic and on to Met Yankee. He's going to take a lot of poke from the Phoenix, but Scary D still feeling himself going that a little a, bit too deep here. That's a mistake, you, son. You're You'll pay. Hold, you're going to hold that one. <laughs> still, though, they, right, they get a lot out of that. They get a, they definitely traded up despite the fact that Vesalius died in the left lane. They got the Gold Fury as well. I'm sorry, the Tier 1 Tower. Uh, we'll go back to the graphs. It was 6,600 the last time. It's still 6,600, so actually winds up being even. A little bit of farm for Snoopy is important, though. He That was a big boon for him. I mean, he was 0-6, yeah. I believe, and just picked up that one kill. Ooh. So that let him... 0-6 he was. He was a lot of engages. And then, so to find wait, that, wait, 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 wait. Six. So You're telling me the 0-6 Apollo solo down the 0-0-10 Rama? Yep. Snoopy. Snoopy. He yeah, still got it. My man. And look at the gold difference between them. It's even. Even though the gold here is. Well, now it is. Completely even after that wave, obviously. But well, yeah. that wave plus the, plus kill. the kill. He was probably 1,000 gold down. Yeah, but I mean, he wasn't worth that much, Vesalius, because he didn't have any kills himself. That's true. Anyway, so maybe so. 600. Yeah, 600. Right. But TSM trying to respond now to the aggression that we saw come out of elevating the solo lane to find the tower. But Degas, thinking better of it, going to back away as are the other two boys at TSM. Scary D, level 20 already. Adero hot on the heels. Can we actually see Adero's experience here? I just hover on him real that's, quick. To that's see a big how he's easy doing. experience, right at the moment. Level twenty on Scary D, two levels behind his Bickham here, and he's Adoro level nineteen to the level seventeen of Boots. About halfway, actually a little bit closer. He's getting pretty close to level twenty here. 
We see a different build coming out of Boots this time round as well. Last time he saw him go for the Bancroft Talon after Boots. This time he went straight for the uh, Book of Toth into Spear. I think I'd, I would have rather see the Chronos Pendant. Chronos Pendant? Reason being? Just because Boosh is fighting a lot, right? It's it's coming down to TSM is fighting non-stop, right? Where he's building the Soul Reaver right now, or, yeah, I mean, it's got to be a Soul Reaver. I would have liked to see a, a Chronos Pendant. I mean, cooldown reduction at this point is really strong. That or, I mean, look the at Gars, Look at Gars, he's baiting in. Vesalius is being aggressive multiple times. The beads are early. The dunk was earlier, though, that the beads were still being used, but he'll still fall down before he can take to the sky. Vesalius finally... Fail, I will say, pays for the price of being as aggressive as he has been just lately. Again. That's two kills in a row that Snoopy has earned right there. Oh, I guess one went to Gars, but they're spending a lot of time trying to shut down this Hunter, and I think that's very smart considering the pressure he had last game. Well, he got MVP last game, and there was a reason for that. Right side tier two was getting pressured. It's just a small skirmish in the jungle. A scary D allows Bickham to control the wave. Tier two on right, though, you'll see kind of crippled, about 45, 50% down. Oh, well, Golf Fury as well is spawning soon as Scary D rotates to mid lane. Gonna meet Ionic, who knew he was coming, and Degas tries to go aggressive with the Berserker Barrage. Bickham finally on the way over. Scary D once again leading from the forefront. There's a blinking from Ionic. Oh, sorry, from, not from Ionic in response. It was met. Yankee Kraken comes out, though, and Boosh will find a Doro. But someone's in the air here. Return kill onto Ionic. So far, a good trade for TSM, but it's not going to go well if they continue this fight. They need Gars. My theory finds the double on the important target, which was Snoopy. And now Boosh just dashed into him as well to oh. support. Boosh oh. is going to fall down to a big old crit on the backside. The fight is still raging. That 40% chance to crit swinging on the third hit. 1.5 times damage. 559 to the dome as we see Boosh get erased. Gars is low health. Bickham is low health. What are they going to take off it? It's got to be the fire giant. They're looking at it already. You can see the immediate go back to base. Bickham, though, does have teleport available. Is Bases it? immediately. Where, where, where is the ward placement? Is there a does ward? It, no. I mean, the closest ward is, is yeah, there. The in the there. So he should be able to get here and try and detest. Tor Ox stance is what he's probably looking for from the transformations. And he's going to actually grass straight onto Vesalius instead of looking for the fire giant. TSM, oh, get it! Bickham God. steals the fire giant. Did he steal that with Ox? <laughs> I think that was Mystical Mail more than Ox, potentially. <laughs> Dude, that was great. So he uses the cudgel and the mash as well. I'm like, well, there that goes, right? And then he uses the Ox Warp and just charges the fire. But Elevate down. makes mistakes that they've been making seasons long. They should have just zoned out Bickham. They should have done better work and maybe focus him first. He whoa, was the whoa, only whoa. threat. But they're aggressing again. They're taking down, using the material all on the support. Immediate turnaround. TSM's going to have this game after oh, that one. Good that God. was a big mistake that they just made. And Snoopy's going to turn this one around in a heartbeat. Oh, no. Game of throws, please. No. Boosh gets a double kill. And now Scary D surrounded by three. You won't find a kill this time. Boosh might even get a triple off this one. He will find and a triple kill and still in the mid lane only Adoro and Met Yankee can stand and go guys what the hell just happened <laughs> uh, one fire giant buff remain it's going to be on Gar's side and take us back to the graphs here you'll notice we're still at 6500 gold so it actually winds up still being in Elevate's favor in the same way it was before aside from the small gain of Gar's getting the fire giant buff now remember uh, there are a lot of towers to, to still be picked up 6000 gold worth of towers still on the board but Adoro has his fire giant Gibbs still has Gibbs Shield Cataclysm. Gars, I'm not expecting Gars we're going to see a tier giant. two. Gars has five gem. You said a Duro then. Oh, and Duro has Kraken. Excuse me. He has Kraken. Has Kraken. But Gars does have fire gem. Let's go to that one. Still though, TSM going to try and group up in mid lane. Duro well aware that he's got three mate teammates down. I actually think that Gars is the last person on this team that needs fire giant. Support will be able to sustain more. Boosh does more damage, which is very important. Uh, Bickham able to sustain more, need, need the front line, and then Snoopy gets the well, objective fair, damage. Gars can be front line with the male renewal plus fire giant, right? It's true. He should be able to stay in a little Love bit longer in those team fights and keep himself going. Golf Fury is available, but TSM choosing not to go for it here. Hmm. Scary Deegan. They're worried about the re engage, is that the big problem there? That's a that's a blue ward, right? That they know, they is, know. Look at this. Though. Yeah, there was they're, a, they're a couple. They're going to come and try and be aggressive. And, well, Beckham stole one objective. Can he steal another one? This time, though, he's got Boosh and Ionic in back. As the bombs come raining down as well. TSM get the Gold Fury as well. The swing around as big as Ionic gets a big ultimate. And Thor is in the sky. They might be over committing here. They're spending a lot of time trying to find a Duro. Duro throws the crack and now going to find two big <laughs> ones right there. And a double kill, although the kills go to different Snoopy players. Snoopy's now isolated oh, by three no. members. Cut from his team as a Duro gets a double. And Ionic, well, he limps away on the tree because he can't contest five members. Both Snoopy and Gars went for the same target. Neither of them wind up getting a stun or any damage off whatsoever. And it just turns around. They focus 100% on Poseidon by chasing him down and stacking but up together. We talked about a Duro, though, earlier. He's 
holding the Krakens for wait, the prime wait, opportunity wait, 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 and finds it. This is a Phoenix in mid. Look wait. who's in left, though. No, I, I don't think the left matters. I think they can end. No, they can't. Well, the respawns are long enough. They can end. This is a bit risky. Scary D is not with them right now, though. It's going to be 4v5. It's only Ionic to defend. Dude, Ionic does not matters. have ultimate available. Can he stop this? I don't I think they're going to win. Yankee's dying. Yankee's dying. No shield saves for a second. Snipes coming out from Vesalius to end it. Yannick will get a kill. But TSM fall 0-2 to Elevate. That was a 29-minute game. It was a great call to end from Elevate, first of all. That call at the end to end was correct. And you can see, right, one person's going right. Scary's doing left. And they're just like, no, we, we can win. And they just walk right. Like, Because here's what happens. They go into the base. Worst case scenario, they wipe and they lose like a tier two, mm -hmm. right? Maybe a Phoenix. There was no way that they can get through all of the defenses. Let's there. go right back to the beginning of the game. You saw the body blocks there from Met Yankee. He gets the kill in the end, but it's Vesalius that combines with him perfectly, and they didn't expect him to roll that aggressive. And I don't think that is, is that they didn't expect him to roll. I think that because he didn't roll immediately, Snoopy didn't think he had it. Okay. So they just, he just felt he was safe enough to just to turn back around right. again. And Yannick was there too to so support. So he was like, okay, I'll be fine. Could have rolled through. My Theria going to get player of the game then. And let's be honest, that Nijar did work. I mean, it, it all started with that raw alt on Gars, right? Well, I guess it all started over here, but that's fine. The ring bounce doing a ton of damage. Find Gars in the jungle. Um, no, I think this is it, right? I'm not no, sure. Yeah, he was no, that's a disengage one where he gets away, jukes out the Thoral as well. But the aggression just continues from him. Not scared to stay on the back line and keep him pinned into that Kraken and Whirlpool combo was really important too. The Kraken actually didn't do any damage because of the Aegis, but he was able to follow up so well because of that Whirlpool locking him down inside and then a good follow up, finding another kill. Uh, more pressure here, right? Just. Ring damage, and locks stop, him inside of it. Stops the Berserker Barrage as well, which is important as well. Just continuing the pressure time and time Damn, again. Did what a good great game. performance. This is a really impressive game. I think if you actually look at most of the members of Elevate during this set, you could actually give most of them MVP as well. They all played really well. And this was so important. He was dead to rights. Fits out the ult, winds up trading a one for one and forcing a Yonix ult here. And then again, pressuring in the mid lane. The big Kraken comes off and you start hearing that ring go off. He raw ults right to the center and just takes out Ionic. Takes him down and picks up the kill as well. Really good work from Elevate. Elevate with 2 and 14 coming into the set against TSM. That was They're a max range it. ult. And then look at this, Flaming Spear again. Right here comes the big one. Oh, jeez. Big crit. big crit hits. Deathbringer pays off and finds him. Dude, Myth had a real sick game. He did. Adora had a big game as well. Who else was he? Vesalius' is aggression, jeez. Oh, Asalius actually got caught a few times. He what was did? MVP last well, game. I think that, that might have been a weak game for him, but Metheria's game more than made up for it, but the Krakens. Well, we can talk to the guy who made those Krakens happen. Adoro is on the line from, with us from Elevate. How you doing, Adoro? All right. Me too. Hello. There it is. Hi. How you doing? Hi. All Good. right, so Adoro. Tell me, like, the thought that happens, right? The, the thought that kind of careens through your mind as two people stack up next to you? Uh, I don't know. It's usually just panic Krakens for the most part for me. <laughs> were, they, were they all panic Krakens? Because they didn't look that way. <laughs> for the most part, I would say so. <laughs> I figured they're just going to jump on me or Thor dug on me, so I might as well drop it on my feet. Okay, so explain to me from wow. Elevate's point of view, what, what went on in these games for you guys? Were you coming in expecting to do as well as you did, or is, is this like a culmination of you guys working hard to improve yourselves? No, we always knew we could play like this. We haven't lost in like a couple, except for like once in a couple weeks of scrims. It's just for some reason we haven't transferred it to the SPL until today. Or yeah, until today. So we're I mean, happy was, about that. That was largely impressive. Tell us about the Nasha pick. Um, really just like to let Myth play whatever he's playing or wants to play. And whatever he enjoys playing the most of the time, he performs the best on, so we decided to go with that. I relate to that. You guys played fantastically today. I mean, this is such a strange situation for you guys, because so far this season, you've only really found that one win against Denial, and then to take two games off of TSM. Do you think you guys can make it to that top six now? I mean, with a performance like that, it should be a good start. It's always the goal, and it's, it's definitely a good start, beating TSM 2 like that, so... It would we be, hope to continue. It would be pretty sick to watch you guys make that comeback. It, it was an amazing set, man. Before we let you go, uh, any shout-outs you want to throw out? Uh, yeah, I'd like to shout-out to our org, Elevate, and our sponsors, Razor, for hooking up all the players with the gear, and uh, G Fuel for giving us the energy to play in the SPL game. Love high res APC is the man, and then Donis is a cutie. APC is the man. Thanks for joining us Honestly, there, Adoro. Congratulations on a big 2-0 win against a TSM side that, well, they slipped to a negative for the first time this season.
That's crazy. I, I'm sorry. Can we can we go to the to, to the uh, updated standings here Should for North America? Because I think this is the first time in history that this roster has not been positive. And at eight and ten, an entire set down, they are now tied for that sixth or fifth place spot with not Cognitive Gaming. Good news for TSM, but for Team Elevate, that is a big boon, especially because they've got to play AFK next. And well, if they can do half as well as what they did against TSM, there's potential for a sneaky split. Sneaky. It's possible. It's possible. Anything's Elevate possible. could wind up just barely clutching that spot. They can't lose any more games. That's it. They have to win everything. Well, a few more games this weekend, but one that's definitely special is the match of the week. Cloud9 going to be facing off against Enemy. And you guys at home can go to esports.smitegame.com and put your vote there. And if you choose correctly, you'll be entered into a raffle to win 400 gems. I oh, mean, Cloud9, just so impressive right now. Just so impressive. Really strong. Cloud9 looking really strong. TSM on wavering. Eager, even stronger than Cloud9 in my eyes, apart from at the land where the Cloud9 beat them. Granted, oh. a lot of a lot of uh, Cloud9's losses are a little sketchy. Well, that was the end, as you can see, of the day of Friday. Saturday, four more games for you. Sunday, another four. Plenty of games and some smart action to come forward. Eight Who's your favorite? Who's your favorite game this weekend? Games. What's your favorite game this weekend? Four sets. Shut up. What's your favorite game this weekend? I don't know. Probably Cloud9 enemy because this is this is enemies like can we do it right? Can we beat Cloud9 with their full roster? Uh, they're so practiced; they just won land. Enemy has done things before; it's possible they can do it again. Tune in tomorrow and find out whether that will be the case for Enemy. Elevate just defeated TSM. I don't know what to say. See you tomorrow.